Okay, so we are in our journey of discovering the various layers and levels of Teshuvah. We identified so far three. First is Rambam, which is Maimonides and its most basic halachic level. And we would have defined Teshuvah there as turning away from sin. So identifying an issue and making the decision not to do it again and having the strength to actually follow through with that decision and not do it again. That would be like the height. Then we had the Musa version of Teshuvah expressed by Rabbi Nayana, which had three legs to that Teshuvah. First of all, this decision to no longer sin, that goes without saying. But along with that, he includes remorse and confession. And heavy emphasis on remorse in that the desire that I had for Teshuvah, I now like clean myself of it, the more I regret it and the more I feel remorseful. That was the Musa Rabbi Yoyna. And then we have the Rebbe, the author of Tanya, giving a halachic definition to Teshuvah, but much more broad, closer to Rambam, but more broad than Rambam. Closer to Rambam in that he doesn't emphasize regret, he emphasizes the forward, no longer sinning, but he defines Teshuvah as a turn toward God. And considering that it's a turn toward God, as opposed to simply a turn away from sin, it means, therefore, there has to be all-encompassing. So the words out there is, a person decides, I'm never sinning again, period, any sin. Because it's a turn toward God. So this idea that it's a turn toward God, and that, therefore, this is different than Rambam, and different than Rabbi Yoyna, that's what we're going to explore today from the works of the Rebbe. So on page nine, on the top, okay, it's all in Hebrew, but it's there. I put a little box to look at the top where you see like partially bold words and partially non-bold words. That is transcript from the Rebbe's diary. After uh, there was passing in 94, the uh, co the committee that there had left his estate to, known as Aguch, and they found they found that there was um, a drawer in his office, very neatly organized binders of there was personal diary, most of which is from the years just before he gets married. He gets married in 1928. It starts a little before that, and it goes all the way till when he assumes the leadership of Chabad, about nine, which is 1950. So his father-in-law passes away. So it goes from like 27, let's say 26, 27, somewhere there, till um, 46, 47, 48, 49, somewhere there. Don't know the, the exact date, but that's the range. And during this time, he's getting married. He's in uh, France, in Germany, and then in America, and traveling around in between all those places. Now, uh, in that diary, they found a separate binder, which they ever had his notes on Tanya. Deba had this expressed a number of times, this idea that he wanted to put out a Tanya with like glosses, notes, sources, and collected commentary. He never did it himself, but he, in his notes, he had like the paired notes for it. So sources, questions, comments, and things of that nature. And since then, it's been worked over and turned into a full book and whatever. On Tanya. On Tanya. Oh. On Tanya. But she is commentary on the... It, it's not so much a commentary, so much as it is like a it's hard to say commentary because there are there are comments, but it's much more like um, the way he describes it is sources, notes, and glosses more than does a commentary. It's similar to there was commentary on the Haggadah, which is also sources, notes, and glosses. But when you look at these sources and you look at the notes, you look at the glosses, you see that he's actually learning a certain way. There's a certain commentary to his notes, glosses, and sources. But that's what technically it is. It's Haris, Haggadah, and Marmukhaim is at any rate, um, in there, there were comments on the fact that the author says that the shuva is that a person should make a decision, I'm never going to sin ever again. And he writes, you can see it in the Hebrew there, seemingly, it should be rak seemingly, if we will look at the earlier halachic sources, the shuva is specifically to decide to not sin that specific sin. And then believes it in question. It says, this is the implication of Rambam, which we learned from the Gemara. And that was kind of leaving it in question. Because if he did a commentary with sources for the Alter Rebbe's conclusions, he's concluding in his notes with a question, like, where did the Alter Rebbe get this from? And that's why he writes, seemingly, it should be 
only for the sin that he sinned. Why is Dalton saying that he, the person is deciding to never sin again? So he leaves it in question in his notes, which was only discovered in 94. But the people who discovered the notes in 94 know that earlier in 1967, uh, the Rebbe took, I think it was about a year, maybe even longer, where every public gathering, there be explained another passage in the Alter Rebbe's 12th chapter of Esther on Teshub, the Geras Shiva. I think it's the only book that the Rebbe publicly went through line by line, like a teacher would do in a classroom, and explained every line. I, I, from the best of my knowledge, it's the only work that Rebbe did that too. The Haggadah, the Rebbe covered the, the entire Haggadah, but not in order. Scattered throughout the years, they Rebbe explained the Haggadah. Mm -hmm. And the same thing with many other books. But like the Rebbe came to the Fabregan, came to the gathering with a little pamphlet, a copy of that part of Tanya, that 12 chapters on Teshuvah, opened it up, we'd read a few lines and then explain it. And the next Fabrengan, the next line, the next lines. So there's an entire volume of Deva's like almost line by line commentary of the author of his essay on Teshuvah. And then when Deva addressed it then, Deva didn't answer the question as to where the author of his source was, but accepted that the author of his different than Nambam and explained the rationale. And there he explains, and that's the next passage, the next, uh, the next, um, the next source you have here is from the Rebbe years later. So he writes his notes in twenty, in the twenties, in the thirties, wherever that is, and there he leaves it a question: Well, where did Alter get the source from? But then years later, when he's explaining it, he says, "Well, it's different clearly, and here's the rationale." So he, this is a beautiful long talk in which the Rebbe explains uh, three components to sin. And therefore, three components to show up to teshuva. To every sin that a person does, is the three components. And the first of the three, he says, is the common theme that exists for every sin, which is in that sin I demonstrated that I don't take God's word seriously. Then there is the specific. Okay, so this sin affects this part of who I am, and therefore I got to clean that up. And it has an effect on the rest of who I am, so I got to clean up that too. But then there is the essential fact, this is number one, he explains there, that it demonstrates that to one degree or another, I don't take God's word seriously. The Rebbe is explaining this. Three levels to sin. So one is, I remember this correctly. One is, like I'm ignoring, I, I, the, the, that's my phrasing. The, the, the phrasing here is, read it, is, because with every sin, one transgresses the command of God, which is the common theme and thread and the essence of every sin, that I'm, I'm transgressing God's command, and therefore through every single sin, including failing to do a positive commandment, I'm told do something, I don't do it. The person throws off of himself the yoke of heaven. That's the words. In other words, if, if the essence of every sin is, Hashem asked you to do. Whether he told you to stand on your head or he told you to keep Shabbos is irrelevant. The point is he asked you to do something, you didn't do it. That's the main point. Okay, so let's... The, the fact that Tanya and Chassidus, uh I don't want to say excuses the person, but... Uh, it sympathizes with the person's inability to keep up with Hashem's demand, command or demand. Empathizes, or, not, not just Hasidus, the Gemara also does that. It doesn't change the fact that that's what a sin is. Right? In other words, if we're talking about what a sin is in the abstract, this is what it is at the core. The core is Hashem asked, you can do it, finish it. Which is the same thing true in reverse for a mitzvah. What's the core of a mitzvah? On level one, Hashem asked, you did. And then level two is, well, it affects my soul in X manner. And level three is, I don't know, affects the world or, or it affects me in my total experience, whatever the other effects are. But the essence of the mitzvah is, Hashem said, and I did. Whether it was to chop, to quote the, to quote the medrash, whether it was to chop the wood or to keep Shabbos. Hashem asked, I did. And the same thing is true in the inverse. The person sins, Hashem said not to, and I didn't. Right? That's the essence of sin. So considering that, therefore, the essence of Teshuvah is, to say, I'm not going to sin. And then there's other levels of the Shavu where a person has to cleanse himself because sin causes a blemish. But the fact that sin causes a blemish, or the fact that sin sin dirties me, so to speak, sullies me, spiritually speaking, causes some sort of stain on me, 
That's secondary to the essence of the sin, which is I didn't do what Hashem asked. And therefore, to show we also have to have these levels. If they have the first essential level is, okay, I'm not going to fail to do what you asked. That's number one. And then deeper than that, then the next level would be, okay, this sin caused X change in the way I think. I got to fix up the way I think. This sin caused the uh, X problem in the way I behave. I have to fix that. But the first is the essential fact that Hashem told me to do something. I didn't do it. And from now on, I have to listen. To, to re-take upon myself God's word seriously. Because at the essence, that's what sin is. I didn't take God's word seriously. So again, you're getting into the excuses question. We're, we're, we're talking about what it is. Forget forget how we deal with that. Just, just what is it? Right? The fact that, again, the fact that we empathize with it because we understand it's very difficult and so on and so forth doesn't change what it is. All right? Yeah, we're clear on this? So, okay. Yeah. <laughs> you want to something? Yeah. So, is a sin considered everything that's like, like the, like, um, the mitzvah's tasya and the mitzvah's rotasya? Or is it like, or like, is that... So, from this perspective, <laughs> if we get to the perspective of Hashem asked, I didn't do it, it's literally everything that everything. the total Jewish law says, because what's the difference? Right. If there's a particular way that a Jewish is supposed to tie his shoes, which there is. Really? Yeah. Oh See, but now you're, you're making me sin, because I didn't know. <laughs> <laughs> now I know. And now I'm I just ruined sin. it. <laughs> it's very simple. You put your right, right shoe on, then you put your left shoe on, then you tie your left shoe, and then you tie your right shoe. But uh, I, my point is that there's a specific way in which you, <laughs> in which the way a Jew does everything. We cut your nails, everything. Right? Yeah, so, that I, I knew. So I don't do them in order, but I don't know what the order is. I don't do them. Sorry. <laughs> I don't know what it's so The I essence of the halacha is, is to do every second one. But starting with which one? Okay, so there's, there is specific, but it, the main thing is to do every second one. Right, because I would never know. So when I cut the yeah. kids' nails, I don't do them in order. I just you do, do them It's mismatch. just do every other one, that's all. <laughs> the, the point I'm saying is that from this perspective, that the essence is not to do what I shan't, is to... This a sin is defined by failing to do what Hashem asked. It doesn't matter what it is. That's the point. And therefore, puts the Rebbe in the footnote. From this perspective, the Alter Rebbe has a deeper, the Alter Rebbe's Teshuva touches deeper as to what the problem was. When the Rambam says, okay, you failed to do X, so don't do X again, what am I addressing? I'm not addressing the fact that I don't take God's word seriously. I'm addressing the fact that I don't take God's ask of that seriously. Whereas the altar is getting much deeper. The fact that you failed to do X isn't the real problem. The real problem is that I failed to do what Hashem asked. And from that perspective, the essence of the Shiva ought to be, I'm now going to do what Hashem asked. How to maintain that? We'll, we'll unpack that. We discussed it the last day, but we'll unpack more of that. But now we're understanding where the altar is coming from. So even though in Nebuchadnezzar's notes, he writes, look, I don't know where they got this. Alter got this idea from. Years later, when he explained it, he gave the rationale for it. Understanding that the essence of sin is I failed to do what Hashem asked, and therefore the essence of the Shiva has to be from now on, I do what Hashem asks. Everything. Everything. How to maintain the Shiva? Right. Another question. That's, that's, that's we're, we're unpacking this a little more. Yes, but we're still stuck with that question. Now, in another talk, the Rebbe compares. So, in, in that talk, I just quoted for you. The Rebbe compares Al Rebbe to Rambam. So where Rambam says one sin, the Alter Rebbe says all. And that was explaining that the reason why the Alter Rebbe said that is because he's addressing the essence of what sin is. The essence of what sin is, a failure to take God's word seriously, and therefore Tshuva is, now when I take God's word seriously. Now, in another talk, the Rebbe compares it, compares Alter Rebbe to Rebbe Niyayna. Now, when it comes to Rabbeinu Yoyna, which Rabbeinu Yoyna said there are three parts to Teshuvah. Confession, the, uh, the no, no longer sinning again, and then the remorse. Now, from so far, it would seem like the Altar was expecting less of you. Because what about a feel remorse? As long as I'm deciding not to sin anymore. Which Rabbeinu Yoyna would say, no, 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 you got to have remorse first, otherwise your Teshuvah is incomplete. Right, so in another talk, Rabbeinu addresses that. Okay. Rabbi Yoyna would say you have to feel bad about the sin. Now, the Rebbe says like this. This is what we're about to explain now, based on this talk from the Rebbe, this next talk we're sharing with you, which is
that the essence of Teshuva in the Alter Rebbe is that from now on, I'm a new person. That's the essence of Teshuva. That's much difficult. From now on, I'm a new person. <laughs> Than any other one. Like, I much rather feel better. For the right. <laughs> exactly. Like it's, that's like really intense. Exactly. 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 Like all or nothing. Right. No, exactly. <laughs> but the, the virtue here is, the virtue here is that it's, Teshuvah is really about letting go of everything, not about harping over everything. And that, that makes the point even further. Kapara atonement isn't either part of Teshuvah. Let me give you an example. Okay? Let me give you, gives an example. A person has an obligation to pray. Right? Sorry? Yeah. Fine. Let me give you an example. If a person has an obligation to pray, to daven. So when I daven, I hope that Hashem says yes to my prayers. So I'm davening. The, the, the basic mitzvah of davening is that when you need something, you have to ask Hashem. So a person, God forbid, is in a situation and he asks Hashem for something. We're not in a situation. A person asks Hashem for more money. We shall be blessed with it. Right? So I'm hoping that Hashem's answer is yes. But what if Hashem's answer is no? Or Hashem's answer is not now? So did I not fulfill my obligation to pray? The mitzvah. There's a mitzvah, technical mitzvah. When you need something, you ask. So the guy needs uh, a few more dollars. So he asks Hashem for, for the money. Did he fulfill his mitzvah? Absolutely. Even if Hashem's answer is not now, he still fulfilled his mitzvah of davening. So Deva makes the same point about the shuvah. If I go to turn to Hashem and I say, no, it's, what do I have to do to fulfill that mitzvah? I have to turn to Hashem and say, that's it, now I'm yours. I'm a new me, I'm serving you. Now, whether Hashem accepts that teshuvah and atones for my past, that's already his business, not mine. I'm hoping he does. And there's the point. This is what Delta was trying to stress. The remorse question and the confession question is about the past. Fixing what was. And the author was making the point that fixing what was is secondary to the essence of teshuvah, which is, I'm a new person. In fact, cleaning up the past is more on God's end than it is on mine. I hope that in response to my teshuvah, and my, the sincerity with which I make the decision to no longer sin again, Hashem's going to say, you know what, I'll clean your past up. But that's second to the essence of the Shiva, which is, I'm a, new, I'm a new person. It's a very forward thinking. It's even more forward thinking than the, than the Rambam. Because even Rambam, which is forward, says, now I'm not going to sin anymore, it's still tied to the past, because I have to identify what's the issue I'm dealing with, and and, and then say no longer. The way the Rebbe is framing the Alter Rebbe's uh, Shiva, it's completely forward. I'm a new person. That's it. Maybe that's why, as like so, as in Sephardic, like we follow a lot the Rambam, and maybe that's why we're always like in the middle. You know, we're always stuck in the middle. We're like, okay, <laughs> this it's like, God forbid you turn on the 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 stove on Shabbat, but like you know you'll drive to show, like or because that's okay, or God forbid, like like nobody will ever smoke on Shabbat, but they'll they won't, but they'll watch TV. You know, it's maybe that's why. Yeah, the cultural <laughs> history is interesting. It's, true, it's like, there's always like a, I don't know. It's very funny. But this is like, no, nothing, and that's it, and you've completely changed. Yeah, I, I, I saw even a uh, teaching, I can't remember where I saw it, which said that the reason why a person who does teshuva is no longer punished for whatever they've done, because it's not the same person anymore. The person who sinned is no longer. It's a different person. It's a different person. Okay. So before we get to the next levels, it's a it's a silly shivar, yeah. I don't know if it comes from Chabad, but it's a specific word to serve. That's a new person and therefore there's no one to punish anymore. He's not there. The guy who did the sin is just not available. So there's no one to punish. It's not around. So now, in terms of the practicality, before we get to the next level, because these so far we, we've covered like the most halach, the three halachic ways of thinking about it. Just turn away from a specific issue, um, feel remorse and regret, and change and confession, and then the third, the al Rebbe's way of I'm a new person, and from now on I serve Hashem, and that's it. The next two levels, which we'll get to, God willing, next week between Hashem and Kippur, are much more kabbalistic and spiritual in nature, and we'll unpack those next week, but. To close out this and to answer this whole discussion about the practicalities, what does this actually mean? A person decides he's not going to sit anymore. 
Who are we bluffing? Who are we bluffing? Especially if we, as we just finished saying, it's literally everything. Every single thing that the code of Jewish law says to do. Right, so, so Hashem, that's right. Mitzvahs are in every detail because Hashem wants to be part of every de, de, every detail of a person's life, right? But that, that doesn't address the halachic question of how do I actually do teshuva if the definition of teshuva is I'm never sitting again. It's all about the intention, no? Like so about, no. I, I'll give you two answers. One is halachic answer, and one is more what I might call a soul emotional answer. So the halachic answer would be that you can do teshuva multiple times a day. The Alter writes that a person should be later in chapter, I think, his 12 chapter essay on Teshuvah, Ger Teshuvah, that a person should be joyous in the confidence that God forgives him. Absolutely confident in God's forgiveness. I was, why should he be so confident? Because every day, three times a day, we make a bracha in our Amida, in our Shemona Esrei, um, thanking God for his forgiveness. Now, the halacha is, if you have a slight doubt as to whether that blessing is valid, you do not say it because you run the risk of saying God's name in vain. Right? Because if, if, you if you're not obligated in the blessing or if it isn't 100% accurate and you say it, you're saying God's name in vain. Therefore, it concludes the altar heaven. If we say three times a day, God forgive us, then that means he does indeed forgive three times a day. Which means, in the altar's estimation, a person could in the morning, Shachris does the Amida, and just before the bracha where he ask, uh, thanks Hashem for forgiveness, he asks Hashem for Teshuvah, and Hashem says, okay, you're forgiven, because he says, no longer sinning. And by the time the afternoon came around, <laughs> Mincha, he has to do it again. And then between Mincha and, and the Arvis, the evening service, how long is it? A half an hour, 20 minutes? <laughs> and again, he's asking Hashem for forgiveness. Right? Which means, that every time a person makes a decision, that's it, I'm, not, I'm, I'm changing who I am. That minute was teshuva. Now, the fact that half an hour later he has to do teshuva again doesn't take, take away the, the teshuva he did a half an hour ago. For example, if a person put on tefillin today and tomorrow he didn't, so the fact that he missed tefillin tomorrow takes away his tefillin from today? What is it to say anything? He has another obligation to put on tefillin. It doesn't take away yesterday's tefillin. So the fact that tomorrow I may not live up to the teshuva I did today doesn't change the fact that today when I said it, I meant it. That's not practical. That's probably the technical halachic answer that a person's constantly doing teshuva. And there's actually sources to this in the Gemara. The Gemara describes that a person should spend his entire life in teshuva. Because a person's constantly telling himself, okay, you know what? From now on, I'm serving Hashem. Okay, I messed up again, but from now on, I'm serving Hashem. Yeah. That, okay, now I'm serving Hashem. And when it comes to Rosh Hashanah, he really does that on a deeper, on a more like fundamental level than you would on a regular Tuesday. Because, you know, you're thinking about your year and where you want to go and so on. Anyway, sorry, go ahead. No, just before that, that thing in person, and you make teshuva, or you decide, right? You're not the same person, but you're a new person. It happens in one way, meaning that it's the same. You're not, it doesn't have it. Okay, so the person tripped. It's kind of, it's like we learned about Russia and Bainley. Like you're bouncing in and out of Russia and Bainley the whole time. The person, the second a person does a sin, he's technically Russia. And then he says, you know what? Now I'm not sinning anymore. Now what is he? Halakhi speaking is a tzaddik. But the halakha is, the altar actually doesn't quote this halakha for whatever reason, but there's a halakha which is that if a guy gives a woman a ring to marry her and says, you are hereby betrothed to me on condition that I am an absolutely complete tzaddik. Yesterday he sinned and tomorrow he sins. Is the wedding a valid wedding? Well, the halakha is we're not sure actually. And he has to get a divorce because in doubt, maybe actually in that minute he was a tzaddik. Why? Because in that minute, it's possible. In his heart, he said, I'm not sinning anymore. Even though the next day we saw him sin, it doesn't change the fact that in the moment, maybe he meant it, and therefore maybe it's a valid marriage. Right? The point being that it could happen in one second where a person says, that's it. From now on, I'm serving Hashem. The fact that the next day his natural biological self told him to do something else doesn't change the fact that when he said it, he meant it. And that's the shuvah in a minute. That's the technical halakhic answer. Now, the more uh, spiritual, social, emotional answer, I think, is. Well, yeah. Doesn't the government come in? Because you must have, like, so, like, 
like if we're honest, we do this all the time. Like, we're constantly saying we're not going to do something again, and we just do it again. Like, I know I'm gonna do okay, again. put, put your aside. You know what? I'm never going to get mad when this happens. And the next time it comes, you get mad. Did you not mean it when you said it? You meant it. Sorry. Did you not mean it, but did you not mean it when you said it? So you meant it. But you meant it when you said it. Right? So Hashem says, you meant it when you said it. Good. I love you. I accept you. Good. So that's the Shiva. Okay, that's but that's the teshuva again. What's the what is the essence of the teshuva? A decision. That's it. I'm not doing this again. The fact that I failed to keep up with it later. That's correct. Nobody else except for Hashem knows if in that minute you did the teshuva, which is why we, the court, say the guy is married in doubt. We're not certain. We don't know what happened in his heart. It's very possible he meant it when he said it. We have no idea. And if he did mean it when he said it, then in that second he was a tzaddik, and therefore his marriage is valid. Even though it's conditional to him being an absolutely perfect, perfect man. But if he wasn't a tzaddik, he'd be obligated. He wouldn't even need a divorce because the marriage never took hold. Because his marriage was conditional to him being a tzaddik, which means unless he's a tzaddik, the marriage doesn't take hold. Does anybody do that? Let's no, no one does. It's, it's a hypothetical mention in the halacha. It's a hypothetical mention in the halacha, but it's not. I don't, I don't know that it ever happened. It's a hypothetical. <laughs> <laughs> right. Okay. <laughs> uh, there's all there's all kinds of hypotheticals and conditions brought in halacha. Okay, so that's I think the technical halachic answer. I think that's the halachic answer that a person can be doing teshuva multiple times a day, multiple times in his life, multiple times in his year, and with each time, even on a practical level, with each time it gets deeper and it gets truer, and you hold that for longer, and you know, with each time it gets. But it's more and more real. It's like you have to do all of the mitzvah, mitzvah tase and no tase also at the same time as doing all of this to say you've done teshuva. Well, again, the teshuva I mean, is in that minute. The fact uh, that later he messed up doesn't take away from the teshuva he did at that minute. He has to do teshuva again, right? So what we colloquially refer to as a bal teshuva, as someone who changed their lifestyle, yeah. is uh, in the socio-cultural sense rather than the technical halachic sense. Right. In the technical halachic sense, I'm hoping to do teshuva sometime soon. You know, like, <laughs> in that sense. To really, really say that I'm not sinning anymore? Right. I hope to get there one day. Right. Right. Probably like most of us around the table, we tried and we tried again and tried again and tried again. But each time we tried, we did the mitzvah of teshuva. Just like each time I put on tefillin, I did the mitzvah of tefillin. Even if when I put it on someday, I was annoyed. I didn't do it from my whole heart. And I wasn't, in the, I was distracted. It didn't, didn't matter. Yeah, I did what it. What point do you, did somebody say they're about teshuva? Socioculturally? I don't know. Now, okay, so that's not a lucky technical answer. I think that that would be the correct halakha te technical answer that a person could be doing teshuva a bunch of times because each time when he said it, if they truly meant it, it was teshuva in the basic halakhic sense. Even if later they're required to do it again, considering that they failed and they're human. Then there is a more, let's say, uh, emotional, soulful way to think about it, which is the person really works at it maybe once twice in their life, do they truly, truly make the decision, that's it, I'm becoming a new person. And then, the rest of their life, they fight to maintain the one decision they once made. And that's what I think is very often the experience for many. Right. There's a point in life where you say, you know what, I got to start taking this seriously. Hashem is talking to me, Hashem is waiting for me, and I better start taking this seriously. Now, the reality is that days happen and things happen, life happens. And you're going to fight every day. Okay, you know what? I, I said that I'm taking Hashem seriously, so I'm going to add this. I said I'm taking Hashem seriously, so I'm going to stop doing X. I'm going to start doing X. All right, so that's, I don't know if this is a technical halakhic answer, but I think on like a life trajectory answer, this is probably the more, right. the more experienced one, which is there is a point in life where a person says, I have to start taking Hashem's word seriously. But which is also, it comes back to, to Rambam. In a sense, like, okay, we say, okay, we have to take Hashem more seriously the way uh, the altar rabbi said, mm -hmm. but then on a daily basis, identify I guess specific come back things. To, exactly. You, know, you can combine all of it. Right. I'm just saying the same thing. Just with exactly. This combines all of it. So there's like the essential movement, which is, okay, I'm, first, that's it. I'm starting to say Hashem, I'm starting to take Hashem seriously. But then in reality, I have to like look at Rambam's thing and say, okay, let's start with X. I said, I'm taking Hashem seriously. Good. So I'm going to start with X. And then I'm going to start with X. And then I'm going to, you know, and then sometimes go up and down, up and down, up and down.
but it's still all founded on the first time where I really said, you know what, I'm going to serve Hashem seriously. Like I'm, I'm, I'm fighting to maintain the teshuva that I once, that I once did. Endless levels. And this brings us back to the beginning. Uh, exactly right. So we started out, I mentioned to you that the Altebbe writes in chapter 29 of part one of Tanya, that teshuva has, is in the heart. And because it's in the heart and the heart has many aspects and levels, depending on where you are in life, your teshuva is different. And sometimes you have to do the same teshuva again, but this time deeper because you're in a different place and you understand more, right? But at the same time, we started out saying that teshuva is also a mitzvah, which has to have like technical halach parameters. So now I'm trying to bring them together. We're like the technical halach parameter, as per Alter Rebbe is, a decision to no longer sin. But that decision itself can be revisited and renewed and re-strengthened and could be applied in very specific areas as life goes on. So we're like, we're, we're maintaining that halachic def definition, which is I turn toward Hashem and say, I'm yours. But at the same time, we're acknowledging that there are levels to that, acknowledging that life goes on and you have to figure out how to make this decision actually, not make it work, but to find the strength within you to apply that decision to various parts of my life. Right? And each, I could even say like this, that each time I apply that decision, it's like I'm redoing Teshuvah. Like, like we were saying before, you can do Teshuvah a bunch of times in one day. So let's just say I made a decision that said, now I'm starting to take a semester seriously. I can even think of a time in my life when I actually had that thought. And now, because I'm, I'm living through that thought, I say, you know what? I have to start taking that seriously. And that minute, when I said I want to start taking that seriously because I made a decision a long time ago, I want to start serving Hashem, I'm kind of like renewing that Teshuvah and redoing it on a deeper level again. And then again for the next item, and again for the next item. Right. So I'm kind of combining a little bit all the different elements of the shiva into into like into a storyline, person's life. Right. That's why I wanted to first go through the technical definitions, and then we can see how we can apply it. Because when you apply it, you can see how all these different definitions play their role. Sometimes you have to harness remorse, right? Not to leave that component out. Yeah. Sometimes I decided I'm taking Hashem seriously, but that thing is very difficult for me. So I have to find it in me to feel why that's not a good thing or whatever necessary emotional things I have to go through to actually say, you know what, I'm stopping to do that because I made this decision I started to serve Hashem, right? Didn't I? So I have to start to stop doing that. So I have to dig and find whatever that remorse is, whatever's going to get me to move. Right? So all of these elements are not like, we shouldn't see them as disputes so much as like layers of a cake. Sorry? <laughs> Halachically speaking? Yeah. Baron Bas Mitzvah. But of course, as you get more mature, you're expected to have a more mature Teshuva. That's the point of the other statement. Teshuva is primarily in the heart. Yeah. Depending on who you are and where you are, what you know, your heart is different and therefore your Teshuva has to be different. And it could be the same Teshuva again, meaning the same decision, I'm starting to take Hashem seriously from now on, is a whole different decision now that I appreciate what Hashem is. Right. That's correct. Rosh Hashanah is not about specifics right. at all. The it's the first step. This year is going to be for you. And then I have to start dealing with implementation. Yeah. That's the hard work. Right? What? Don't give me quippers like Hashem's response. Hashem says, okay, you said you're mine. Good, I'm yours. New slate, clean, done. Let's start again. You want to start again? Good, I'm in. Let's start again. That's Hashem's response. We were saying before that a person does the shuva. Even if Hashem doesn't give the atonement, I still did my part, right? Just like a person davens and says, please give me X. But Hashem says, not now. I still did my tefillah. So Shoshona is like my part. And Yom Kippur is Hashem's response. The Kapara where he says, okay, you know what? You're in, good, so am I. And that's why Sukkis is so exciting and so much joy. Because how, how, how much more joy is going to be than that? Where a person says to Hashem, that's it, I'm yours. And Hashem says, okay, good, I'm in. Let's start again. It's ecstatic. <laughs> of course, look, this is so exciting. <laughs> when, I was a kid, when I was a kid, they used to scare us so much about all our sins. That, like, if we made it past, past the show bar, you're like, please, I don't want to croak right now. <laughs> <laughs> like, literally, I was like, please. <laughs> yeah. It's so funny. Like, yeah. So different. <laughs> yep. So that's in a nutshell what uh, our halachic so far level of the show. We're going to get to the more spiritual side, God willing, next week.
we'll see even deeper levels than this. How, how could it possibly be deeper than this? But we will. We'll get to even deeper levels. Okay, have a wonderful week, everybody. And a good, healthy, happy, sweet year and inspiring book in Rosh Hashanah. Amen.